This is Harry Watt of North Carolina State University, Wood Products Extension, and we're interviewing uh, Louis Weaver of Dana Products of Michigan. He is a, a longtime firewood processing person, industry professional, and his company's been making uh, machines for a long time. Uh, this project is, is funded by the U.S. Forest Service through the Wood Education and Resource Center of Princeton, West Virginia. And should anybody feel that we've misbehaved or discriminated and been not fair to anybody, you can certainly file a complaint with North Carolina State University or the U.S. Forest Service Wood Products, uh, the Wood uh, Resource Center of Princeton, West Virginia, and uh, the Department of Agriculture. Louie, welcome to be with us today. Hey, thanks for that intro introduction, uh, Mr. Watt. Um, appreciate it. And uh, again, my name is Louie Weaver. I'm the, uh, the, I lead our sales and marketing team here at Dyna. And I've been with the company for about 14 years, started when I was quite young. So I've, I've had quite a bit of experience and uh, I'm privileged to be part of the team, part of the industry. And, uh, you know, I don't care for formal meetings uh, too much. And, uh, but I, I like Harry. I like this one-on-one. -on -one and uh, happy to share our, our knowledge and experience, and hopefully it can be a, a value to, uh, to all of you listening. Now, Harry, I gotta tell you, I got one complaint. Uh, I'm not gonna file anything with uh, the NCU, like you said, but it's actually pronounced Dina. Uh, notice you pronounced it Dana, which a lot of people do. Uh, it's D-Y-N-A, and uh, we pronounce it Dina Products. So just a little correction there. Okay, I, I stand corrected, Dina. I'll, I'll remember that. I've got a cousin named Dinah. All right. Well, you're on it. Well, she's good looking, and I guess your machines are too. Thank you. Thank you. We think so. Well, tell us about firewood processors. What do you know? Well, um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of things we could talk about. Um, what we focus on here uh, is a small, so I'm going to say mid-sized firewood processors, uh, we currently don't do any uh, circle saw firewood processors, and uh, we get asked a lot why we don't and, and what the difference is in between the, the bar saws and the circle saws. And the, the best I can explain that is it's kind of like the difference between a, a semi-tractor and a, a pickup truck. If you're hauling 80,000 pounds, you certainly need a, a semi-tractor. A pickup truck isn't going to do you a whole lot of good. But if you're just hauling some two by fours from the lumber yard or, um, or you're hauling uh, some dirt or you're hauling 10,000 pounds, well, a, a semi-tractor uh, may actually be inconvenient uh, just because it's a lot bigger and, uh, than what you need. So we use that same principle uh, to differ, differentiate uh, between the bar saws and the circle saws. It, it really comes down to what you need, uh, what your situation is. Some people need a bar saw uh, some people uh, need a circle saw, and uh, there's nothing wrong with either one of them. Uh, the maintenance is different. Uh, I'm going to say there's probably not less maintenance or more maintenance with one or the other, but it, it is certainly different. Um, the, uh, the bar saws, the bar and chain uh, is, is easily, easily swapped out. Um, there's not a, a lot of time there, and you can sharpen it yourself. Uh, circle saw doesn't need to, to be changed nearly as often. But uh, when it does, the maintenance is a lot more major. So that's, that's kind of my piece there. Uh, do you have any questions or clarifications on that, Harry? No, I, I appreciate that. Um, you know, most of the machines are bar machines, and, and people kind of work their way up from, from a very humble beginnings in the firewood business. So uh, everybody either sticks with the, the bar chain or they move on to the circle as their business grows. Uh, but tell us about how firewood processors work and what's the, some of the thinking of, of picking different components for it. So I, I've broken that down in, in, the, in the three sectors. I'm going to say a, a small or homeowner type processor uh, is typically going to do about a one to two cord an hour. And it'll probably have functions that allow it to be loaded from the ground or without an additional machine. Uh, a lot of homeowners uh, may, not, uh, may not have a skid steer or a tractor to be able to handle that wood. And uh, then that's going to load the log, uh, typically advance it hydraulically. The cutting and splitting might happen manually, might happen hydraulically, uh, just meaning that you might pull the bar and the clamp down by hand, 
or you, you may have a hydraulic cylinder to do it for you. Uh, if you get to the midsize uh, processor, which I call, you know, an 18 to 20 inch capacity, probably two to three cords an hour, uh, everything is definitely going to happen hydraulically. Uh, you're not going to have any manual functions. Uh, everything's going to be done with a pull of a lever. And then you have your large size, uh, which I'm just going to say go to an everyday producer, and uh, they would do, be doing three cord plus an hour. Now the principles on, on what happens with the wood is gonna be pretty similar from everywhere to the small, to the large, and even to the extra large firewood processors. Uh, that log is gonna get pulled under your bar and chain or your circle saw, uh, whatever your cutting mechanism is. That's gonna cut the wood to length. It's gonna drop into some kind of a chamber and then get split through that chamber uh, with anywhere from a two to four to six way wedge is, is what we typically would see. And it's gonna get pushed out onto the back, either onto a conveyor to convey the wood into a pile or your pickup truck or dump trailer, um, or the, some of the smaller ones uh, will just dump onto the ground. Uh, typically, uh, even the smaller ones have optional conveyors. Uh, it, it does a lot better job of getting the wood away from the machine. And if you get into the midsize and larger machines, uh, you really do need to have a conveyor uh, in order to utilize the potential of the machines. If you don't have a conveyor, you got a critical component missing. I'm gonna take that back to our pickup uh, truck and semi-tractor um, uh, illustration that I used earlier. If you got a pickup truck, but it doesn't have a bed on it, just an axle, you know, you're not gonna be hauling a, a, a lot of stuff on it that's kind of like getting a firewood processor without a conveyor. Uh, it's a critical component that you need. So again, uh, you'll pretty much see that stuff, uh, you know, from the small to the extra large machines, some kind of variation of, of those features. Well, I got a question. One of the things that I think is really important on the front end of the processor is because our processors are generally built on wheels and we pull them around, it really limits the size of the log deck that you can have on the front end. So, you know, you just can't have a real long one. And I see that when people get established, they often will add a log, longer deck so they don't have to load it as often. Seems like to me that would be, if, if anybody wants to uh, improve their productivity, that's a big deal. That's a, that's a great point, Harry. And um, I'm gonna segue that into a couple more items. So. Um, here at Dyna, we focus on uh, portability uh, and, and small footprint. So our machines, although they, they handle up to a 20 foot log, um, aren't, aren't really long. So we have clients say in Alaska, especially, or even other states where they might do 25, even 40 foot logs. Uh, Alaska specifically uh, does tree length firewood. Well, you really don't wanna to be towing around a machine that's 40 feet, 40, 50 feet long to handle that, that tree length wood. So typically what people do when they get there, if they're in that world and they get their operation and their processor set up is they'll just add an additional live deck or additional roller. Uh, I've got a client in Alaska, Bob Zackel, that uh, purchased a, an SC-14 from us along with some extra parts. And then he just built his own standalone live deck that extends way beyond the front of the machine um, and he can handle virtually any length of log. Uh, people would do well to pay more attention to that. Uh, everybody, all us manufacturers, we're no different. We love to talk about our cycle time and how fast our machines cut and, and uh, the power and all that, and that's all great. But if you can't uh, efficiently get that log under your cutting me mechanism, um, the splitting cycle time just isn't going to do you a whole lot of good. So the, the log deck um, and log advance are, are key functions that bring your log into position for cutting and splitting. And efficiency of those is crucial. Um, you know, if you just talk about your splitting cycle time and, and you don't efficiently get your log up there, uh, you're just not going to get as much wood cut. And so to your point of the longer wood, if you can set up a machine with, let's just say an additional live deck 
to where you can load maybe two cords at once instead of one cord, or you can handle a 30 foot log instead of just a 20 foot log, uh, you will experience a lot more efficiency. And uh, with our machines, you can do that uh, with an additional log deck or live deck without sacrificing the portability of the core machine. Very well, very well taken there. Uh, the, uh, the, the question a lot of people ask is, is what, there's lots of options on, on wedges and different machine manufacturers have different uh, ones they like that match up with their machine. Uh, you like most of them make different size machines. So you have wedges that uh, match up. So sort of break down what, which of the wedge options works on which machines and what kind of wood. So all of our wedge options are, are designed or geared to work toward all kinds of wood. Uh, now, with that being said, uh, if you've got a piece of American elm uh, that's dried out, uh, anybody's four-way wedge may even struggle with that. And uh, I don't think you'd want to be running it through a, a six or an eight-way. Um, now, on our 12, on our smaller unit, uh, it's a price issue price point. So, so that wedge is fixed. Uh, doesn't slide up and down hydraulically. Uh, on all of our other models, we use a, a wedge that slides up and down hydraulically. So it's, it's tied to a hydraulic cylinder that pushes it up or pulls it down. And it allows you uh, to, to utilize that full range of motion. So if you've got a, a six-way wedge in the machine, for example, uh, you can center that on your log and, and get six equal pieces. Same with a four-way, or you can drop it down and run it as a two-way wedge. Our most popular wedge options are the four and six-way. Uh, that works with just about uh, any kind of wood. Uh, again, for the most part, uh, if somebody tells you their machine will never plug up, they're, they're not being candid with you. Uh, it's embarrassing when it does, but it, it simply happens. Now, in the, in the 14 years that we've been in the industry, I've seen the, the wedge uh, issue change. Uh, back in the day, everybody wanted to split it in half or just split it in, in, in small enough pieces to be able to handle for their outdoor boilers. In the last years, that's changed quite a bit to where uh, people want a symmetrical split a lot more. Uh, they want the wood to look a lot nicer uh, going for campfires or even the new uh, updated outdoor boilers. They need to be split down smaller. So, so wedges have become a lot more important. And a lot of people uh, will refer to the box wedge or some people call it the French fry cutter. It's like a 16 way wedge that you, you run your wood through. It looks like French fries coming out. It's a great tool, uh, but of course it takes a lot of power uh, and splitting force. And so on, on uh, the small to mid-sized machines, it's, it's simply not feasible given the power constraints and the hydraulics that, that people run on that. Um, so they, they simply don't have the horsepower, the pressure needed to perform that kind of wedge because of course it takes a ton of, of pressure to, to run that through that. Uh, so we have to use other technology to get to the desired end product, which is, is really the key. Uh, it doesn't matter that much how you do it. It matters a lot more how your end product looks. Well, anybody that's buying the more modern stoves, they've got smaller fire boxes, uh, a lot shorter. The 16 inch wood seems to be what would match there. And the big splits you were talking about with the outdoor boiler is just not suitable for somebody with a, an EPA modern stove. Uh, exactly. I understand that the, uh, the smaller the wood, the higher the price, that there is a price improvement. Uh, the, the, the big bulk guy is, is looking for a bargain in his wood and he wants the big splits, he throw them in the stove. The, the small splits uh, take a lot more effort. That's absolutely true. And I've seen that time and again. So if you're selling bulk wood, heating wood, it matters if you're at $60 or you're at $65 a face cord, and that's only a 10% differ, uh, differential there. If you're selling bundled wood or, or campfire wood or restaurant wood, that kind of stuff, um, it, it, price point matters a lot less. 
you might be at $3 or you might be $4 a bundle wholesale or at, at five to seven retail and people are still gonna pay it. Uh, they might complain a little bit, but they're gonna buy it. I'm even gonna buy it if I'm out camping and I need a bundle of campfire wood, I'm gonna pay five or I'm gonna pay seven and I'm gonna grumble that they're making a lot of money off me, but because I want the wood, I'm gonna buy it. So there's a lot more wiggle room on pricing. And I believe that's where the money is for most producers, um, especially in our world. Uh, now, if you've got the, the great big circle saws where you're just pumping wood through uh, five, six, seven cord an hour, that's a different story. Uh, but for the small to mid-sized producer, uh, watch the market, watch where you're selling to and make sure you're, sm you're, you're utilizing the smart money. Well, one thing uh, we always want to mention in the firewood industry is we never use the word cords without either saying it's a full cord or a face cord. So in your talk that's so far today, have you been talking about full cords or face cords? I've been referring to full cords. Okay. Uh, down for us uh, there when we rate our machines, and this is true for all manufacturers, as far as I know, we talk about full cord. Uh, and then typically when people buy wood, they're talking face cord. Uh, so in, in, in my math, a full cord is a four by four by eight uh, section of firewood. And a face cord is 128 cubic feet or approximately one third of a full cord. Okay. What, uh, some people talk about multitasking for the, the processor operator. And I think one example may be is why the splitter is splitting. You advance the next log forward. How much multitasking is safe and advisable for a firewood processor operator? That's a great question. I'm glad it came up because safety is our number one priority. If, if our customers and us uh, don't go home at the end of the day with, with all 10 of our fingers, uh, we've done something wrong. Uh, you know, multitasking to a point is, is good. It increases your efficiency, uh, but I'm gonna caution against it, uh, especially uh, unless you're an experienced operator. You know, uh, advancing the log forward while your splitter is splitting, absolutely. Starting the cut while the splitter is retracting, yes. Uh, certainly do that, that's gonna increase your efficiency. It doesn't put anybody in danger. But what I really caution against is taking your eyes away from the area where the action's happening. So you can be uh, watching the area of the splitting at the same time you're advancing your log forward because it's, it's right in the same area. What you wanna be careful about is, is running your log deck uh, while you're splitting because you, you can't watch both of those at the same time. Uh, taking your eyes off the action that's when people get in trouble. Uh, you forget what you're doing or you reach into the machine uh, and advance the log forward at the same time, run your log deck at the same time. That's when people get in trouble. Uh, I can kind of distill that down and to keep your eyes where the action is. If you can multitask uh, and keep your eyes where everything's happening, you'll probably be fine. If you can't, uh, multitasking is probably not uh, the best option at that point. Very well said. Uh, we don't want anybody getting hurt using our machines. Tell us about the hydraulics and, and, and what, what do people that are looking to buy a processor need to understand about the hydraulic systems on a processor? That's something that uh, I'm not going to spend too much time on uh, for a couple of reasons. It, it goes a, a, above my expertise. I'm not a hydraulic engineer, so I can't really drill down into the details. Uh, what people's end of the day concern is, is will this machine split my wood? And we get asked tonnage questions. Tonnage is important. Uh, you got to have the power there or your machines aren't going to work. Uh, it also makes a difference in how your wedges are set up, uh, your wedge technology, how that all works. Um, the way the firewood processors work is very different from the way the uh, tractor supply splitters do and the way their wedges are set up. Um, so I'm going to tell you to not pay a lot of attention to the splitting force because every manufacturer is going to have to have a machine that works or we're not going to stay in business. And uh, there's really no more new kids on the block. Uh, so that's, that's my piece on hydraulic splitting force. Okay. What about, do you have any opinions regarding the power systems, gas 
diesel, electric. You have any thoughts there you want to share? Yeah, that's that's something I enjoy talking about. Uh, we offer all three. Uh, our our clients in Japan and overseas tend to like the electric, and they're very nice. Uh, they run quiet. They're fast. They're very very responsive. But of course, they're not as portable. Most of our U.S. clients prefer the diesel, and we do as well. Um, most of our industry likes the sound of diesel. Uh, I always tell people that what you want to look at is, is the pricing, the performance, and, and your current situation. So the gas engines work very well. Um, they have close to the same power and performance as a diesel. You're not going to see a lot of drop off there. However, a lot of our customers are running other kinds of equipment. And so they've got a diesel transfer tank on the back of their pickup that they're going to use to fuel the processor. And if they buy a gas unit, uh, they're going to have, a, to have a gas tank as well. It, it really drops your efficiency at that point, and one gas machine with a fleet of other diesel power equipment doesn't work well. Um, now, on a, on a pure pennies uh, uh, versus dollars, the, the diesel is going to run more efficiently, less operating cost per hour, but you can replace a gas engine about twice uh, before you're going to pay what you did for the diesel. So, uh, a diesel is going to add about five grand to your machine purchase. You can buy about two gas engines for, for 5,000. Uh, so you could replace that gas engine two times and, and still be ahead financially probably. Uh, but most people like the diesels and we do too. Uh, the, the resale value is better. They run a little quieter than the gas engines. Their torque curves are a little better. Uh, so it's, it's kind of an industry thing I feel. You know, everybody likes the diesel, uh, less people like the gas, especially on the bigger machines. Uh, we found if we offer people a choice, they almost always uh, go with the diesel. Uh, but the smaller machines, uh, say like RSC-12 um, or Wood Beaver smaller machines, they're typically going to have a gas engine just because that's a better fit for that size of machine. We're going to finish up just talking about conveyors and getting the wood out. Uh, you never want any waits and delays uh, getting the wood out of the way. Uh, people put our firewood on the ground. They put it in dump trailers. They put it in uh, large uh, dump trucks. What have you seen regarding conveyors you think is smart and you want to pass on? I'm going to say uh, you want a conveyor. Uh, whether it's an attached conveyor that enhances the portability of the machine or a, a hay elevator that you've had in your backyard or a hay elevator that you picked up for 150 bucks at an auction, uh, do have a conveyor. Um, if, if you've got a firewood processor, you need to have a conveyor to convey that wood away. Uh, almost all of our machines sell with an attached conveyor. Uh, we, of course, uh, can take it off if people already have a conveyor on it. Um, and I don't care what brand you buy, uh, either either get an attached conveyor on the machine or have a standalone conveyor that's going to get your wood away. It's going to pile it. It's going to get it away from the machine uh, or it's going to put it right into your pickup truck or, or dump trailer. Okay. Well, anything else you want to pass on to us, Louie? I don't believe so. Um, if there's one thing I'd like to just tell everybody is, is stay safe. And, and work smart. Uh, at the end of the day, um, our, our industry can be dangerous. Um, it's also a lot of fun uh, if we all stay safe and uh, we all work smart. All right. Well, we want to thank you at Dyna Products. Uh, appreciate this. Uh, and next year, we plan to be in Wisconsin, and we hope to be on the ground with some demos, and we'll hope you bring some machines and split some wood for us. Well, uh, thank you as well, Harry. It's, uh, it's been a great privilege and uh, we'll certainly be around. So we hope to see you next year. Well, thank you. I'm going to 